that long day behind you. Good times lie ahead. With company worth keeping, that'll bash a smile on your head. Come on in, the doors open, you'll find just the finest folks here. Pull up a chair, grab a drink, and let our stories your ear. Cause we're the top, 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 Here you're always welcome. The top, 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 the tavern. Promising beer and bed numb. The top, 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 the tavern. Music, medicine, then some. The top, 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 the tavern. The song's over. And welcome to Talk of the Tavern. I am your host, Travis Sivart, author of incredible series such as Portals and The Downfall. Check them out on Amazon. Now, tonight's topic is going to be Judging Ink and Mods. Judging Ink and Mods. And we'll get to that in a couple moments here. Uh, before we do that, I want to let everybody know in chat, because we do have a live chat audience for those of you watching podcasts. We have a live chat audience that interacts with us on the show. And you'll hear us talking to them. You'll hear this sound. That means I want to read some comments off by them. And for those of you in chat, we are recording a podcast here. So we may not read or respond to every single thing you put in chat. That doesn't mean you can't do it. Because you guys are talking to each other. And often yourself as much as us. So... Uh, disclaimer, adult show, adult topics, adult humor, so, uh, fuck off if that's shit you don't like. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, Michael, exactly, like a studio audience, precisely. Now, my vice is tonight, I am drinking a incredible cheap-ass bourbon that's pretty damn good, Henry McKenna. What about, what about our chat studio audience in here? You guys, uh, what are your vices tonight? And then let's pass it over to the incredibly talented and beautiful and really the only one that has hair out of the two people I'm looking at, Andrea. I'm like, Kevin. <laughs> um, <laughs> Andrea in the chat here. Um, my vices are Noodle scratching at the door. He wants to be let out of my office. And I have a couple cans of Fanta left. And I think that's my vices for now. And, can, yes, I'm getting there. Give me a second. Dramatic pause, sir. And to the lovely foreign Kevin. You can't say foreign. That's <laughs> offensive. Whatever. It's only, it's only offensive if you're British, then we find anything foreign offensive. <laughs> uh, good evening. All the way from the completely unsunny shores of the UK. Like uh, real quick. Subscribe. You can, you can, yeah. Jewel. <laughs> Thank you for that subscription of 11 months. We have passed Aww. the Twitch baby thing. Here's to your face. As always, it is lovely to see you. And with apologies, Kevin, please carry on. Well, no apologies required. It's Jewel. That's like the presence of royalty. Hello, Jewel. It's lovely to see you. Very true. Very true. All the way from the unsunny shores, unsurprisingly, because it's like, I don't know, what is it now? 10 past 2 in the morning. Here in the UK, I am tonight's token minority on the show, the returning Brit. I'm Kev. Uh, my vices tonight include smoking far too many hand-rolled drum cigarettes. Uh, and earlier on, I was pacing myself, but I'm now chewing my way merrily into a nice Chilean Malbec this evening. Very good. I also want to remind everybody here at the Tavern, we do have merchandise. You can see right here, I am wearing a hoodie with Talk of the Tavern on it. And we have shirts, coffee cups, stickers, and other such things. And you can find it just by simply typing, or uh, if you're in chat, exclamation point merch is the command. If you're not in chat, you can go to bit.ly slash tavern merch, that's B-I-T dot L-Y slash tavern merch, and get incredible shirts such as I'm not an assassin, but 20 bucks is 20 bucks, as well as C, it's not just for cookie. And other safe for uh, work shirts that are horrible, all the same. Don't forget, we also have our other two podcasts, Dealing for Survival, our Sunday Night Dungeons and Dragons game that we play live on air and release as a podcast. And Right Night every Saturday night, where myself and a couple other published authors get together and discuss different topics for the whole creative world, not just writers and readers, but everybody. Now, a bit of good news before we go into the topic. As of Friday night, as of just a couple days ago, 
we talk of the tavern was accepted on Pandora as a podcast. So we are now officially Yay. on Pandora. Well, thank you for that enthusiastic support, Kevin. You're welcome. I've always wanted to be in Pandora's box. Indeed. Now, this is in addition to all the others like iHeartRadio and Spreaker and Apple and Google and Spotify and Amazon and blah, blah, blah. So, but this is kind of, I guess, the pinnacle. This is the uh, tip of the penis. This is the uh, Eiffel Tower <laughs> of the Waffle Stack. <laughs> I don't know. Um Waffle Show. Waffle. We can play Weird Al's Waffle Thing. But not without, you know, getting a DCMA warning. So, uh, um, hmm. Oh, my God. Michael just said the long train finally pulling into the station. I'm guessing that is a reference to he's in the bathroom viewing us. Yeah. But I'm not really sure. It's, uh... You would, you would hope that was the long train pulling out of the station, but he's to their own. <laughs> he did say pulling in. <laughs> Finally on Pandora. It may be. Yeah, maybe it's you. Yeah, let's pray oh, it was a Pandora so. analogy. Oh. We can but hope. Okay, let's set up this topic. So the topic I want to talk about for this episode is judging ink and mods. And my concept for this is I have multiple tattoos and i have had six different piercings um andrea i know you have piercings and tattoos kevin you have tattoos ever ha even had an ear pierced or anything so piercings also yes i used to have one of my ears pierced and one of my nipples pierced okay. so i don't have either in anymore and of course we know nothing more adventurous way beyond where we are oh god yeah and <laughs> so i want to talk about all kinds of things when it comes to judging ink and mods. I want to cover how society used to judge people with ink and mods versus how they look at them now and how sometimes even now us as folks who have it and many friends who are much more into it than us, we still look at somebody and we get judgy about it. Sometimes in a good way and go, I want to be their friend. Other times in the bad way, just like, oh, what were you thinking? So this is where I want to go, um, and this can go anywhere from our favorite tattoo artists to stories when it happened, and all over the place. Now, Andrea, can I start with you and get some thoughts on the topic for you here, or from you here, for you, with you, oh, on you? Yeah, I'm all, I'm all for tats and mods and piercings and ink, because I have it. I have a few mods. Um, I'll go on a little history. Um, been pierced, I want to say 18 times. I think 18. Don't have them all in now, but 18. Um, as far as individual tattoos, almost 40 individual, but they make up bigger pieces. Um, so, yeah. But when you look at people, it used to be like, oh, they were only in circus. You know, like the circus freak. Or Sailors, like growing bikers. up, it's like yeah, and, and like growing up in, in the 80s and stuff, it's like, oh, bikers, or they were in prison, or whatever, and now it's kind of right. the norm, so. I, I try not to stare too much, because I'm just fascinated by everybody's ink. It's like, shows their personality, and I want to see it, but some people get weird if you stare. <clears throat> I'm going to, uh, the chat <sighs> is replying. Uh, Jonathan is excited, said, ooh, this is going to be fun. Gary says, I have three tattoos, had an ear and pierced, no more. Michael says, no piercings or body art, but I did get one of those Cracker Jack tattoos last week. Um, Do they still have those? And Jewel says, I used to work for a place that seemed to have a three tattoo slash piercing minimum. This was the Carolina Theater. Elizabeth says, if they were weird when you stare, maybe you should put your pants on. We're just going to pause for a moment there. Why should I wear pants to stare at them? <laughs> I could be so, pants. So your lady boater doesn't show and make it feel awkward. <laughs> um, and, and we're going to go let Andrea finish her thoughts here before I read any more comments out. 
Oh, well, as, as far as mine, um, you don't really see mine. I have a lot, but they're they're mostly covered. You could see maybe two small ones if I wear short sleeves, but I'm going off from Michael. Michael's comment says, I, I always ask, and most folks enjoy talking about their tattoos. I know I do. I like when people inquire about it. So, I don't know. Well, I think the key that you've hit the key point on the head there already, Andre, which is the difference between talking about them and just staring at them from a distance. It's easy to misinterpret someone's stare. Whereas if someone comes over and goes, Hey, you've got cool ink. Can I ask about it? Oh, Hey, yeah, that's why you're interested. No problem. I have I definitely know. been turned away when I go to ask questions. It's I I've commented on people and they just look at me like, why are you even talking to me? I'm like it, it's one of those things when people wear shorts with fucking big words across the ass and then trying they to yell read at it. you for looking at their ass the fuck did you put a word on your ass for then the same with ink and, and tattoo you know you don't want to be rude about it but to admire the art and the style and the appreciation you can give somebody I understand a lot of us creative folks are fucking little introverts that don't want to talk to you because people are assholes, but it's going to happen. Um, let's see here. And weird when uh, uh, Michael says most people, as I think Andrea read that comment, most people enjoy talking about their tattoos. <clears throat> weird when says appreciate ink work, even piercings. Never had any desire to participate. Totally put my brain into a robot body, though. Well, that is a definite modification mm -hmm. right there. Um, a little bit. Jonathan says, well, I have 40-plus tattoos. Haven't really been judged because it's considered military culture. I want to come back to that because that is on my list of things to talk about. And I'll point out, if you don't think you've been judged, you haven't been paying attention. And I'll get to that in a little bit. Kevin, I want to give you a chance to say some of what's on your mind on the topic. I think you're right. Let's not just forget, you know, we're talking about the, the judging of tattoos and body mods as well. There's two quick points I want to make that have cropped up to me so far. Uh, I have multiple tattoos as well. But I was raised by a father who was always very accepting of cultures he didn't particularly participate in himself he was never a closed-minded person but he drilled it into me from a young age if you have tattoos where people can see them people will make prejudged conceptions about you because of them and because of that because i work in front-facing hospitality all of mine are above the elbow so i can wear a shirt roll my sleeves up and you would have no idea how heavily tattooed I am. I have literally one visible tattoo, and it's that tiny little one on the inside of my wrist there. And that's the only ink you can see. And the only reason that one is there is because it's a matching tattoo with somebody else, and theirs is in the same place. So, so I made a conscious decision that even though I accept and embrace tattoo culture myself, to be aware of its potential impact on me in a wider society where not everybody shares my views. And I think this ties into what you said, Travis, which is what made me think of it and raise it as a point where you said, you know, you can't really have a tattoo or a piece of artwork somewhere where it can be seen by other people and then take exception when people want to look at it. It's the same as hanging a painting on a wall. You know, you don't do it and then expect nobody to look at it. The whole purpose of hanging the art is so that people can look and appreciate. And as has been mentioned, people are quite often very happy to talk about their tattoos. Okay, you're always going to get one or two people who aren't as approachable as human beings. But generally, tattoos are quite personal or body mods. You know, there, there are quite often reasons behind having those specific pieces of art. So people are quite happy to tell stories. <laughs> the other thing is the change in perception of imagery involved in tattoo. Now, Andrea opened with a very good point that originally the image of somebody who was tattooed was very much put you in a particular camp. You know, you were a bad boy, a rebel, a rocker, a criminal or whatever. 
a lot of that was down to the imagery of early tattooing. Mm -hmm. Now, you're talking about an age of tattooing where you didn't just walk in like you did now and go, I want this, that, and the other, and the tattooist drew something up for you. You walked in, and there was a book of designs, and you picked out something that was in that book. If it wasn't in that book, it didn't exist. And so you had a finite range of imagery to choose from. You had a lot of what's now called, uh, for lack of a better description, what would now be referred to in, in modern times, I suppose, as the Sailor Jerry era of tattooing, the old school naval tattooing. So that that's kind of imagery, swallows, hearts, roses, anchors, daggers, skulls, all your sort of traditional tattoo imagery. And so that imagery alone kind of defined you as a person because to have tattoos you also had to be the kind of person who also was comfortable with having that type of imagery on your body it's not like today where you had you can go and have wonderful sprays of flowers tattoos that are like watercolors lifelike tattoos that are like someone you know tattooed a photograph of your child on your leg the range and skill of tattooing has become much more expressive these days Very much so. and i think that may well be I mean, again, it's an advance in technology and surgical techniques, but that may well be why we've seen an upward surge in body modification in the last 15, 20 years. That's kind of taken over from tattooing as being the front edge, if you like, you know, the, the leading elite. The, uh, before it was hardly before anyone's got rebels. tattoos, but we've got them because we're badass. Now it's every fucker's got a tattoo, but I've got subdermal implants right. screwing bits in my head this done that done tongue split whatever you know it's, it, it's kind of like yeah it, it's it's become the new extreme edge of personal modification if you like actually that ended like four to five years ago in my opinion there's other things that are more extreme now and yeah absolutely <clears throat> um were you done with your thoughts sir for, for a minute, yeah. You ready to pass it on? Okay. Absolutely, yes. <clears throat> a couple of things I want to read comments on here for, and then I want to address a couple of things also. Uh, Jonathan says military culture, as I mentioned earlier. Michael corrects enlisted military culture and says if you see an officer with a tat, you know they were most likely prior enlisted, so you trust them more. And Jonathan agreed with him. He also uh, agreed with my statement that I don't typically pay attention. Might have been judged. And Jules says, where I work now, staff have to cover their tattoos because the 80-plus crowd, her residence at the uh, place where she works, view tattoos in a negative way unless it's military tattoos. And then Michael brings up a very interesting point here that I think we want to set aside for the moment and come back to in a little bit. What is tattoo culture be a viable candidate for the current movement for diversity and inclusion. And that in itself could be an hour long discussion. Mm -hmm. So let me set that aside for the moment and uh, say, first of all, I have three large tattoos. I'm talking about 12 inches by six to eight inches wide. Then I probably have 14 or 16 other smaller tattoos and uh, they will eventually become probably one large one or two large ones. So by the time I'm done, I'll have five tattoos. But right now I have like 20 or something like that. Um, as I mentioned, six different piercings. Um, I am very particular on my tattoos in that I want them to mean something to me. But I'll tell you what I really want. By the way, Kevin, the whole rolling up sleeves, I have done that till recently. And now if I'm wearing short sleeves... You can see two of my tattoos now that I'm bringing them further down as I get older. And kind of the bottom line is, if I'm working for somebody else, I'm going to be doing grunt shit work. If I'm working for myself, it doesn't fucking matter. And also, with a certain amount of style, grace, and suave, tattoos mm. add as opposed to detract. Um, hmm. Um... Sorry, I'm reading comments here. Weirdwin says, I will note that my first thought when seeing a nose piercing, the very first thought before I really recognize what I'm seeing is, oh, they have the sniffles and need a tissue to wipe their nose. Again, it depends on the piercing, but I do wonder when you have a cold how that works out. 
Um, oh, it's good. Let me jump over here to Jonathan about the military or the 40 plus tattoos not being judged. Here's the thing about judging, which is right in the uh, title of the show, at least at this point, until I decide to change it. We all judge on appearances. It's true. If you say you do not, well, I don't think you're paying attention. It is natural animal nature, and human animal in particular, to judge by appearance. Look for commonalities or differences for good or bad reasons. And when I see somebody with tattoos, I, like we've discussed, my first instinct is go, wow, let me look. I want to see. I don't even care about the person. I don't care what they look like. I don't care how tall, fat, thin, what color, what religion. I just want to go like, hey, let me check out their art. But there's other times I get knee-jerk reactions, especially if I see tattoos on hands or faces. And it's a momentary twinge. At work today, I dealt with two people with facial tattoos, like straight up forehead and everything. Um, and there's that moment of, uh and then there's a moment of, hold on, I want to check out their ink. And there have been times where I'm like, hey, do you mind if I just take a moment to appreciate your ink? Most people are surprised, but they're once they go, what? Oh, yeah. So there is good judging and bad judging when it comes to looking at the art we put on our body, whether it's through modification or tattoos and keep in mind, a lot of times it is rebelling against society when it's newer or extreme. On the other hand, like anything humans get into, it can also become an addiction. And you want more of it and more of it. Um, go listen to Weird Al's song about tattoos. <clears throat> what I really want, great though. Song. What's that? I said great song. It is. Um, oh, I'm going to interrupt myself for Michael's comment here. <clears throat> Tattoos can be intriguing and decorative, a personal expression of something appealing. Piercings and such, to me anyway, are just shocking. I don't see them in the same way. Neither do well, I. Go ahead, Andrea. Do you have a thought on that? I was going to say, it depends on what it is. Right. Okay. Um, like, 90s. The big thing about piercings was all along the ears. Right. And I actually kind of like that. Because, like, now you can just pull their ear off. Gets a perforated edge. Oh, oh no. Um, but, you know, I have piercings, and they're the, the most minimal gauging there is. Andrea has ear piercings, and they're gauged. So, like, ear piercings or even nose piercing, maybe even eyebrow piercing, doesn't even phase me anymore. Now, when I see that piercing going behind the collarbone and back out again... That piercing makes me go, oh, just because I imagine what that would feel like. And I'm just like, oh, it's not because it looks freaky. Subdermal implants fascinate me in neither a positive nor negative way. But it's like looking at a pretty spider. Or in some cases, perhaps a, a beautiful reptile. You know, you're kind of fascinated, but it feels a little dangerous. Um... Okay, Michael, we will get to that. I think we'll we'll make that a around the board question here, Michael. He says I'd be interested in hearing Andrea's thoughts on what she's expressing with her piercings. What do they mean for her? So if we could set that aside for a few minutes and and point the question towards the tattoos and the piercings. Um here here's where I'll wrap up my thoughts before I pass it back over to the general group here. I want more color in my tattoos. I want a sleeve that comes down to probably just above where my watch rests. And I want it to be colored all the way up to the shoulder on both arms. My problem is, since my tattoos have to mean something to me, I don't know what to put there. And actually, I now have some of the holy symbols of the fictional gods in my novels and my Dungeons and Dragons game that I'm working on here and I'm hoping I can extend that down into a whole sleeve covering the various pantheons in my world and this one here has more of nature and wise quotes and I'm wondering what I can do to continue that down 
the other thing is money. Which mm-hmm. Andrew and I have a great tattoo guy. But we haven't saved uh, his life, so we still got to pay money. It doesn't matter. I will pay him. Happy. Happy to pay him. He, he does great work. Great work. Okay. I'm done hogging the mic here. Mm-hmm. Any follow-up thoughts to what I've said before we bounce over to the meaning of our personal yes. piercings and tattoos? Yes. <laughs> I'm glad you said you only went it down to your watch line because tan lines. Tan lines across tattoos drive me crazy. Well, the reason I said that is because I do want to be able to wear a long sleeve shirt and not have it visible in case there's ever a time I want that. Um, but I'm done worrying about if I roll up my sleeves or wear a short sleeve shirt if they show or not. But I still want it to be, you know, even if the cuff rides up a little, doesn't necessarily show because there's times where it's just better if it doesn't. <laughs> Um, Weird one says you you can fill your arm with dad jokes. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> maybe I can find visual representations of some classics. Oh, you know what I could do? You know, like the. Uh, okay, a couple of my favorite dad jokes. I told Andrea she drew her he, she she drew her eyebrows on too high. She looked surprised. Um, or Andrea. When Andrea told me I had quit impersonating a flamingo, I had to put my foot down. So maybe I can create visual representations of these <laughs> jokes. You can end up with a tattoo of a flamingo with huge eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's like the and it'll give you a We didn't do it. Did Cogsley give us a toast for this? Hold on. we got to get a toast to open the show. Now that we're, you know, half hour in. Yeah, just over half hour in, yeah. Okay, this actually relates very well to our topic. Your success and happiness lies in you. Resolve to keep happy, and your joy and you shall form an invincible host against difficulties. Helen Keller. Helen Keller. Of course, when she said it, it sounded a little different from how I pronounced it. That's horrible. <laughs> you know, before we got to the sensitivity era of the past few years, I would actually just say it as she did. Um, I was, was going to ask, did you say invincible host or invisible? <laughs> it's, uh, I used to also tell the Helen Keller joke of why did her dog commit suicide? Because if your name was, you'd kill yourself too. But we can't tell those jokes anymore. They're very insensitive and offensive. Yeah. Okay, don't tell that one then. All right. Yeah. Or the one about why. Are... <laughs> um, why she didn't go skydiving anymore. She scared loved the it, shit but out scared of the dog. shit out of her dog. <laughs> Here's one that makes uh... sense. How'd she burn her ear? Answering the iron. She was deaf. Come on. It's a dumbass joke. It is. But the one about how she burned her fingers makes perfect sense. That should have been with our last show. She was reading the waffle iron. Oh, oh God. <laughs> I'm sorry. In chat, <laughs> Weirdwin says... I'd never tell the joke about how her parents would punish her by leaving the plunger in the toilet. And then I want to add to that, and later she would pleasure herself by leaving the plunger in the toilet. Oh, dear. Uh, okay. So, hey, Kevin, tell us about mm. what your tattoos mean to you. And why you got piercings. What was the representation behind that, even though you don't have them anymore? Okay, so... Let me touch on the piercing thing for a moment. Not so much from my own personal angle. Uh, mine, uh, I had my ear pierced. Uh, I've always been uh, into rock and metal. So when the era where I grew up, which included the horrendous denim phase of the 80s, so you can picture the kind of bullshit involved. I had a long dangly earring at one point as part of my looks. So I had my ear pierced for that. I had one of my nipples pierced just because it was a rock and roll thing to do and I was pissed one day. But... Um, Neither of the piercings had significance per se, but... I have a question. 
Yeah. What kind of nipple piercing, please? Was it full spider web shield, or was it just like a bar? No, it was a bar. It was a... What, Andrew? Sorry? Was it on the same side as your earring, or opposite? Uh, same side. I don't think I ever had them both in at the same time. So it was the same earring, you just moved where you put it? Oh, yeah, just yeah, interchangeable, <laughs> you know, back and forth. Yeah. One on display or the other. <laughs> but, uh, so... Um, I'm not going to name her tonight, <laughs> and I would ask that neither of you, I would ask neither of you to do, because I'm going to talk about my best friend and some of her more extreme mods, with reference to the motivation behind more extreme body alterations, if you like. Very good. You and the reason I went. Finish the, the reason I went. Yours first. Well, I mean, I. I yeah, I can do. I mean, my tattoos, uh, most of them either commemorate significant moments in my life, like something has happened that's made a shift or tilt in my life, and I've wanted to have some piece of ink done so I have a permanent reminder of either a life lesson learned or uh, okay. a couple of commemorative okay. people I'm... who've passed on, things like that. When you finally figure it out, I really want to see what your fucking 2020 tattoo is going to look like. Because <laughs> it's been a hell of a year for you, man. <laughs> yeah, did 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 you see the the one I the my, my, my most recent one I had done the little one I had done a little while back? No, do you have to have a couple your of weeks ago? To show us. Uh, yeah, I did some on my back, but I don't know if I could. Uh, maybe I can show you in a minute, but you wouldn't be able to see it very well. Okay. You'd need to be zoomed in for it. Uh, basically, I've just started a new series. I'm having uh, the thing. It's going to be either seven or eight, as it stands at the moment. Small pictograms, all roughly three or four inches round, uh, down one side of my back. Uh, it, they're mainly image-based, um, uh, and each one is a pictorial representation of an important person in my life, someone who's been around for a long time or has had a very significant impact. Me. And the reason they're in a line down the back of my shoulder is, is it's literally the people who... You, do, you only have to turn around, and they've always got your back. Oh. Uh, and, again, not mentioning her name, but the first one I had done a couple of weeks ago was for the person I'm referring to tonight, my best friend. Um, and it's based on a Dropkick Murphys lyric uh, from the song Rose Tattoo, signed and sealed in blood. I would die for you. I've got your name written here in a rose tattoo. Um, so it's a rose with a cunt in the middle of it. Instead nice. of the instead of the middle leaves, it's a cunt down the middle, uh, and the clit is a little tiny pair of balls. Uh, because if you right. know who I'm referring to, oh, yeah. you'll understand the reference. That, yeah, that fits perfect. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's it. Everybody who knows her is like that. Yeah, that's yeah, the oh, best yeah. thing you could have done. Yeah, um, but uh, so this friend of mine has a lot of modifications. Um, to just to reel a few off, she's tattooed all over her body, including several award-winning pieces. She's got her face tattooed. Uh, she has what appears to be the word laughter tattooed on her forehead until she pulls her hairline back and reveals the giant red S that actually says slaughter. She has a spider's web and stuff tattooed on her face. Uh, about 60 per 70 percent of her skin now is completely covered. She's had her tongue split twice. Um, she has multiple scarification. Okay, I think we just lost Kevin. Oh, nope, he's back. Kevin, just so you know, we are yeah. having some technical difficulty with you. You might want to check your internet for a moment here before you try to go on. I think it's the government. The government is stopping it. <laughs> They're terrified of this woman. Well, the the reason I the reason I'm not going to mention her name, even though you both know who I'm on about, and maybe even some of the people who've seen the show for a long time, is because some of the work that she's had done, it it's viewed of such an intrusive nature. It's actually illegal in this country. She has to travel abroad to other places in Europe to have the work performed. There's yeah. illegal. Um, so that work. What kind of work is illegal? In this scarification. I mean, if it's done in a serious uh, situation, um, it, it, yeah, even in it, even under medical condition. Hmm. Okay, we're losing Kevin uh, again. You you back with us, Kevin? I'm here. I'm fine. Yeah. 
Okay, you're you're going in and out just so you know. So we start to get dead air, okay. and I start to talk over you. It's not you. It's nothing personal. I'm just tired. No, of that's fine. I, I can't tell. My picture looks fine from my end, right. so you'll have to let me know if you're losing me. It's um, a... Yeah, it, in a sense, that's there's a form of judgment for you and an explanation. So that the form of judgment is even if you give consent in this country, having somebody scarify you, and for those of you who don't know, that's having several layers of the dermis, your skin, cut away by surgical procedure with a scalpel, and you then treat the wound with citric acid so that it deliberately forms a scar mark for patterning and beautification. It's considered a crime. The person who does it to you can be charged with assault, even if you give your permission, even if you sign consent forms. And so my friend has to travel to other, again, I'm not even going to say where, but other cities in Europe in order to have these procedures done. Hmm. And not push to her. I think you could probably say what cities people can go to. That way if somebody in Europe... Um, uh, okay, uh, um, among I mean, other places. So Berlin, for example. Um, yeah, because they like to torture yeah, basically, there are there are several countries you can choose from. It's a case of finding the correct artist in the right place at the right time. Because again, because of the nature of the work, a lot of the, the guys who are at the top of their trade, and they are very few, travel. Yeah, so, you got to think there, there's not you... many. Sorry, go ahead. Andy. There's not many people you can go to because with with all of that, they can't practice as much. So. And when they wave yeah. at you, they wave like this. Anyway, we've had long conversations, my friend and I, about her motivations behind some of her more extreme work. Some of it is just a personal attraction. She really likes, I really like the way that looks, you know. I, I, I wanted, when I saw that on somebody else, I liked the way it looked, and I wanted it on me. But deep down, there's a deeper level to it. And it is, I suppose, what tattoos used to be, going back to when Andrew was referring to, you know, 30, 40, however many years ago. That what she has done to her now, the more extreme body modifications, the subdermals, etc., they go beyond a line where society has kind of drawn its line in the sand of what's ignorable and acceptable and what's not. So whereas before tattoos were immediately looked down on, now so many people have got them and they're so commonplace. It's like, man, no one really cares about you got a tattoo unless you've got the word cunt tattooed in six-inch high letters on your forehead. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kevin. Most people um, don't have a six-inch forehead like you. <laughs> um, so to her... It's it's not and it's not just the, it's the act of rebellion, but it's not just the act of rebellion. It's it's her drawing her own line in the sand. It's saying, I realise that this goes beyond what society considers to be acceptable right. difference, if and I that can... is exactly why I want to do it because I don't feel like one of you. So I want to be as blatant as I can be. I want to make sure there's no. You know, there is no questioning on which side of this dividing line I stand. There is most of society and there is people who look like me. And it's a very conscious decision on her part to have this work done, to, to have these more extreme changes made to her body, because she's not just another girl with tattoos. She is somebody making a very deliberate statement about herself, and society, whatever. I'm about to say something, but I want to preface it with, I, I have seen this woman, and if she had absolutely mm -hmm. no modifications or piercings, she is a beautiful woman. Physically, she's an attractive female. That's just a simple fact. Um, so what I'm about to say is a lot of people originally perhaps to rebel against their personal society. I don't want to say society as a whole because it's accepted enough. It's not a bad thing but perhaps their parents their family their culture that they were brought up in um this is why some people get tattoos others get it because they genuinely have something they love so much they want it permanently marked on their body 
going past that, some people feel that is how they will stand out and stand apart, which on one hand may re be rebellion. On the other hand, Andrew, did you just raise your hand? Oh, no, I had an itch. Okay. I, I, I looked away and I looked back. Um, but they do this to stand out and feel special, create their subculture, because a lot of us, myself included, never have the real urge to be part of mainstream. As a matter of fact, Andrew and I both have had points where we really love something, and when it goes mainstream, we're like, well, fuck that now, we can't like it. We've had these moments. Other people, it's similar to how serial killers build up, or adrenaline junkies, or even people who are into BDSM. You don't start at this level. You start here. And then once you have that, you look for the next level. If you're an adrenaline junkie, maybe it's a bungee jump, and then snowboarding, and then uh, parachuting, and then the glider suits. Uh, if it's BDSM, maybe it's a little light spanking with a hairbrush, and then it moves to being tied down, then it moves to, you know, the full sensory depth. Whatever it is, um, this is also in human nature to seek the next level of what you're doing, to be the top of your own psychological pyramid that you're building to be unique and different. Now, that being said, I never even think that shit when I see somebody with tattoos or piercings or any kind of modification. By the way, Michael says something very interesting, and it's such a subtle statement here. He says, in a society where it's increasingly difficult to be an individual. And that is subtle because a lot of folks, they flock to not be an individual. They seek the protection of the herd. Which, fun fact, even rebels who are trying to be outside society are seeking the protection of the herd quite often. Where they're not leading the pack, they're hiding in the pack. And also keep in mind, some people will get this thing to keep other people away, to keep them at a distance because they don't necessarily feel approachable to a lot of mainstream or regular people. On the other hand, you have people like me that look perfectly normal till you dig a little deeper and realize, like Andrea, like Kevin, there are levels of fucked up weird not too far below the goddamn <laughs> surface. <clears throat> Well, I like the way you made sure you listed them in descending order there as well, like Andrea and Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, I feel you're the most normal of us. I'm sorry to offend you. <laughs> I find that highly offensive as well as inaccurate. I know. Now shut up and eat your fire stick. <laughs> <laughs> Andrea, what Next show. See, that's, a, that's a whole different show. It is. Um, it's a good show. We should write that shit down. Yeah. Send it in message. It's, it, um, it's, it's, it's definitely dark enough by the time we go live. There's no reason why we get with the advent of my spangly new phone, we couldn't try that one night. True story. We'll just have to come visit. Well, that as well. You can come and have a go then. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I would do that. But <laughs> sorry, we... sorry, I made that sound passive aggressive there in an, only in Eng the way an only an Englishman day. come and have a go if you want <laughs> Andrea, come and have a go um, if you think you're hard enough at work the other day um, one of my co-workers mentioned that they and their family went somewhere and they were just talking with such awe of the fire spinners who were using the hula hoops with the flames and the fire eating and the spinning of the poles so by the way for anybody who hasn't been in the tavern we long enough to people. know these things. Andrea and Kevin both do this on various levels. Kevin much more than Andrea. Andrea kind of uh, played with it, toyed with it, because she liked it and wanted to see what it was like and enjoyed it. <clears throat> I don't eat the fire. I already no. have heartburn. But, uh, yeah. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> but, Andrea, did you have something else to say on this topic of judging? And I also I want to talk about when we, as people, well, with extreme friends, see somebody and we have a moment where we go, whoa, the fuck? Well, I was going to answer um, the question that was asked of why. Yes. So, all right, for mine. 
the tattoos, they are not for anybody but for me. Other people enjoy them when they see them, but they're not always exposed because I have, I have like little ones on my arms. Can't, a lot of people don't even notice them. Um, like most people want sleeves. I want my legs done. And that's what I'm working towards. And so there's that. Um, she has legs worth but, doing too. <sighs> so I, I, I took some notes here. Um, like how in, in the culture over the years and, and like Jewel talking about her work, the tattoos had to be covered in the early two thousands. I worked in the mall at a photo place and I had to cover my tattoos. I didn't have a lot then. And you know, with the pants, it's easy to cover, um, the legs ones, but I have like one on my hands and one on my arm and I had to cover them with either makeup or stickers because that was not appropriate for work. And now I see people like high up in companies that have tattoos up the neck, down the hands, everywhere. So it's changed a lot. Um, but why I have my tattoos, they, they all kind of mean something um, with the little characters or the spiders. I have, I have spiders and spider webs. I have lots of things like that. And they, they all have special meanings to me. But I think a lot of it is control over my own body and the pain that comes from the process is part of it. I know it sounds kind of morbid or whatever, but that's kind of my thing. Like I, I mod my ears, I, I gauge my ears. And sometimes I just don't wear my earrings for months or whatever and they go back down and then I gauge them again. It's just like, because I have control over it, so I do it. It's not really for anybody. I'm not gonna. I I don't think I would have the big, huge disc in my ears. Yeah. I'm curious, Andrea. Giving a mm -hmm. little more information that perhaps you you would normally. You deal with daily pain. You deal with chronic pain. Mm hmm. So with the pain you can control, the discomfort you can adjust. Do you mm -hmm. think that ties to it, or is there some other reason? Probably. You're it? Probably because, yeah, I have pain all the time. And some days it's hard to move. It's just you know, life for me. But with this, it's like, it is a controlled thing. It's like, I this is under my terms. And then out of that pain comes a really nice piece of artwork. So, bonus, if that answers your question. So what about your other modifications, your other piercings? Oh, well, see, I've, I've had tons of them. Um, I only keep in, let's see, two, four, five. I only have five out of all of them. I took all the other ones out. Like, I did have my nose pierced, but it, it was always like a shiny booger, and I kept staring at it. I was afraid I was going to go cross-eyed. Yeah. And I had my lip pierced for a while, but I like hot coffee, and that proved to be bad. Hot coffee, metal ring in your lip. So I'm just like, nah. That was, that was like when I was teenager, 20s. So that was just a phase. Does that but. mean people with tongue piercings like really should just stick to like not too hot and not too cold drinks? Well, with tongue but. piercings, I had my tongue pierced too. That, that had another set of problems. I kept biting it in my sleep and I busted a tooth. Oh. Kevin yeah, so that, that one went away. Huh? Kevin started to say something. I want to make sure he gets a chance to. I was going to say, you, um, you might find that you don't get the same problem with the lip ring now because um, you used to get a lot of um, different metals being used, um, but they're using a lot of new modern alloy mixes for piercing jewellery now, uh, partly because it's lighter and easier to bend and shape and repair. Um, so you may find that they're not as bad as piercings used to be in terms of picking up and transferring and holding heat from things like hot drinks. It doesn't tend to be so much of a problem these days. Well, this was like 20 some years ago, so I don't think I'm going to do that again, but. So let me ask you, do you guys ever mm -hmm. see somebody with any tattoos, even if it's a single tattoo or a single modification, let alone many and various and have a knee-jerk reaction of judgment of being judgy of them yes 
despite the fact that I'm completely comfortable with it, I, I mentioned this at the top and I said we'd come back to this on the show. I said to Travis just before we started when we were mulling this idea over, to see somebody like my friend who's only a couple of years younger than me, who has a whole raft of modifications, a whole host of tattoos, I find that acceptable on a more deeper intrinsic level than if I saw the same level of work on somebody who was 18 or 19. The one to me says a lifetime of carefully considered creation of a very definite character. The other, to have a huge amount of work like that done at such a young age, that to me, I would make the judgment that what we're actually looking at there is what Travis referred to earlier, which is this kind of natural human instinct to kind of almost form an addiction to it. The, the Pringles effect, if you like. Once something, you pop, you can't stop. Something else to look at is if there are, let's say, even below 23, it's probably not their money that paid for it because we know what these mm -hmm. things cost. Mm -hmm. So they spent somebody else's money, especially if they're only 18 or 19, unless if they're the yeah. rare teenage multimillionaire. Um, it's because the work that I want done in ink alone is thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars um, just in, in time. So when you see somebody that young, you're like, they jumped on a bandwagon. They were making a point without the years of experience of realizing how to fine tune making a point. They went that, to that an said, extreme. Go ahead. Yeah, that's all. That's all perfectly true. But before I lose the track of what I wanted to say, that said, I've used it to my advantage in the opposite direction. Um, I'm a manager now. I work with staff from all kinds of walks of life. I've had younger members of staff who perhaps might not have been inclined to pay so close attention to what an older manager has got to say because of the age gap between us until I've engineered somehow to either make a comment on their ink or comment on my own. And they're like, oh, you've got tattoos? Yeah, yeah, I've got loads. You just can't see them because of my shirt. And then, you know, start chatting about my ink. And the next thing you know, bang, I formed a link with somebody who's the age of my son who five minutes ago thought I was a stuffy old prick and now think I'm an all right guy and is therefore twice as likely to listen to me when I ask him to do something at work. Kevin, I'll, I'll tell you, uh, I really feel yeah. both those things describe you very well. You don't <laughs> have to be just one. I am not putting you in a box and limiting you. Well, you know, like, I don't, you know, kids nowadays, they, they have access <laughs> to more things like $2,000 cell phones and stuff like with with my tattoos, I would mull over them for like six months to a year to several years. I would come up with the design mm -hmm. and then I would save up and then I would find the right artist to do it. Like I couldn't just yeah. get in a car, hey, this weekend, let's all go get tatted up. I couldn't do that. No, I, I, would, I got the advice before I got my first ever one from a friend of mine who had tattoos. And he was like, when you fix on a design, like get a copy of it from somewhere. And back in those days, that was a lot more complicated because you couldn't just snap a picture of it on your no. cell phone, you know. But you got a copy of it or you got something that looked like it and you pinned it up on your fridge door somewhere where every morning you would see that picture, you know. Go to the fridge for milk, see it. Go to your, every time you open the door. And the whole point was you put it up somewhere and if you still weren't sick of it, if still after a couple of months you looked at it and went, man, that's a cool picture, then you got it inked. Here's there was another. none of this oh. walking off the street and goes, oh. fuck it, that'll do. <laughs> well like for my big my big my big piece on my ribs that is something i wanted for years and i went and found an artist and i'm like hey because you know they they do the transfer on your skin and they they kind of color it in i'm like could you like print that out and put it on me so i can have it for a week and see if i like it and see which way i like it and they did it so that that helped <laughs> Uh, a comment from Weirdwin, and I had something else to add to this. Oh, one piece of advice that I was given before I got my first tattoo, and I didn't follow it, but I now give this piece of advice because I wish I had. Whatever you get for your first tattoo, and by the way, I don't personally recommend making it a sports team 
somebody's name, never somebody's name, I don't care how much you love them, I don't care if it's your kid or your grandmother, never somebody's name, a sports team, or a political affiliation. Because most people I know that have had these tattoos at some point in time in their life are like, God damn it. But anyhow, the advice I was given is for your first tattoo, do not get it on your back or someplace you cannot look at it every day. Get it where you can see it. So it means something to you. You realize it's there, and then you actually know if you want another one. And by the way, yeah, Kevin? And then I want to read words. There's one. Go ahead. There's one question that people don't ask people with tattoos and mods, and it's perhaps the most pertinent question you should ask them. And you hear the question asked all the time. Why did you have that done, knowing what other people were going to say, going to think? The question nobody ever asks is, how does that make you feel? How does that person, you know, when you look down at your ink, when you see your reflection with your tattoos in the mirror, never mind the reaction it gets from anybody else, how do you feel about yourself? Right. This Nine is- times out of ten, that's why we've done it. Because when I see those, it, I mean, it can be different meanings for different people. For some people, it's like battle different scars. meanings for us on different days. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? But they, 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 tattoos are not just a work of art they're not just like a scrapbook it's not like they're not just like keeping mementos like a oh this one reminds me of that day in 74 or whatever it, it, they can literally adjust your mood your perception of yourself and hence that ties into the question somebody was asking earlier in the program what's the motivation behind other body mods now, piercings etc uh, michael and he now asks yeah. where it says at the end of the day that's the thing isn't it you have to live with it in the dark, alone. <laughs> he might have used a different inflection, but that's what I'm reading into it. Um. See, this is where this is where people are my friend up the edge. See, because I only have tattoos in the dark once they're healed. Anyway, I can't tell you where they are. I can't feel my tattoos. She can lay in bed and stroke her subdermal implants. All Kevin, she wants. I'll feel your tattoos if you need it, man. Okay. Oh, thanks, man. But anyhow, Does she have any glow in the dark ones? Ooh. What? Not what? Subdermal implants? No, no, no. no. I, um, like any glow? Because <coughs> I know LED they do some that glow under implants. black light. Uh, they have black light no, and glow um, in the dark tattoos. Not on a permanent basis, but I'm pretty sure. I mean, she's got a couple. So uh, two of the implants that she has, she has two screw threads implanted, kind of like in horn positions. So they're actually metal plates implanted against the skull under the skin in her forehead mm. uh, with little screw threads set into them. And normally they just have a couple of little metal retainer studs in them, but you can attach little horns and other screw-in attachments and stuff to them. So I'm pretty sure you could get some glow-in-the-dark stuff for that. But, oh, that'd be cool. She's got, she's got so many piercings and mods and jewellery. I imagine if she made all of them glow in the dark, you could probably stand on a street corner and use it to direct <laughs> traffic. But... I, I want to cover this uh, other uh, yeah, advice no, I have. The, until, until the traffic crashed, which if she took all her clothes off, as you can see, her, most of her piercings would take about four seconds. But... Hold on, I'm picturing her naked on a corner with crashed traffic. And glow in the dark. What, what, what well, traffic? Really just nipples are bad. <laughs> I can't see any traffic. Yeah. <laughs> really, it, piercings have disappeared from mine. Anyhow, as I was saying, another piece of advice is take time guys before you get anything the picture on your fridge the temporary tattoo on you uh whatever it is make it personal make it you make it mean something and don't get it that night or next week after you come up with it sit on it for a matter of months and if you can a matter of years because those are now a permanent piece of who you physically are and they're hard to remove. Yeah. You might be able to take a piercing out. You still have a scar from it. No. It it does it, it doesn't matter what your motivation is, as long as it's a deliberate motivation. Yes. Yeah. Andrea. Well, and I was gonna say, if you have a tattoo that you're not too happy with, I know a guy. He's great with cover up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's uh. By the way, uh, Weirdwin. This is a comment I want to read. Kind of a standalone. Doesn't need much commentary to it. 
Uh, Weird Wind says, I recalled something a friend did about 20 years ago. She got a full back tattoo to celebrate a divorce from a terrible situation. She didn't do it all at once. Started with the basics and filled it in. But it's a jungle glade with lion clubs. Cubs. Not clubs. Lion cubs. (laughs) Rawr. Mac. Uh, Lion clubs. one (laughs) One for each of her children in the middle. She adds flowers and birds to celebrate each year after. And when she remarried, she added a pair of dragons watching over the cubs. That is a well thought out piece of very personal art. And by the way, Michael, Andrea has said to you, thanks for sharing, Andrea. I learned something. Oh, you're welcome. I don't know. I was listening. I don't know what the hell he just learned, but yeah, that's great. Um, Closing thoughts, because we're getting to the wrap of the show. Now, by the way, I don't mind if we're having a great time. We can go a few minutes over. I don't mind that at all. But we are coming up to the, the final bell here if we're sticking to the clock. We can answer more questions and do more talking after the podcast and release the, Michael release the chat. clarified constructive pain vice, uh, versus mm-hmm. oppressive pain. So if you guys have questions or comments, throw it in chat right now. And something else I'm going to do, I'm going to take off the sub-only chat in case anybody is hanging out who's not sub-only. Here's your chance to jump in before we do the wrap-up. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the wrap-up right now and give you guys a chance to comment. But first, I want to go to Andrea and Kevin and see if they have any closing thoughts. I kind of just gave mine with the make it you. Kevin, closing thoughts? I think people need to remember that, yes, judgment will inevitably happen. What you do with that judgment is up to you. And the end results aren't always going to be what you expect. The person I've been referring to tonight works in a a work environment where they have a very unique, very stressful, and very high-skilled job set. And because of... (laughs) Uh, it, no, it's in the extreme end of the care industry, and that's about as descriptive as I want to be See, for various reasons. if you were a politician, I was going to go with a hooker is correct. <laughs> um, <laughs> suffice to say that they are a lot more tolerant of staff personal appearance, mannerisms, etc., because they are a very unique set of individuals. And they are the only ones capable of doing what they do. So she works in a quite permissive society and yet she and her mods are single-handedly responsible for a change being brought in last year to the company's acceptable dress policy oh, nice. uh, oh. and rather than rather than take offense at knowing that, that an entire company had changed its legislation just to try and stop her from having any more work done to herself after they saw one bit and knew she wanted more done and they specifically brought this rule in to try and stop her having more of it done. Uh, and instead, all they've done is foster a sense of pride in her because now every new member of staff that comes in goes, fucking hell, this bit in the contract about your personal appearance is a bit hardcore, isn't it? She just goes, <coughs> that'll be me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So what I'm hearing, Kevin, you could... is next time Andrea and I come overseas to visit you, we're going to spend a little extra time with this friend. With her. Yeah. Cool with that? She cool with that? Check on that shit. Yeah, man, she, mate, I don't even need to check. I'll speak for it right now. I've just got to give her the nod and she'll be there, yeah. Well, well, she'll be she's okay my, with she's one of my, she's one of my closest though. friends. I've, I've, I've known her more than a quarter of a century. I'll crook a finger and wave Sambuca. She'll be there. But you see, <laughs> she, people might look at her and go, what a freak. But that's on the outside. Andrea and I know what's on the inside of us. Oh, she's, yeah. So freak, yeah, uh, yeah in, we got it. Not, not that I want to sound like I'm championing a cause, so just for the interests of clarity, brevity, and full disclosure, she's an absolute fucking freak on the inside as well. Oh, we know. We've seen the toilet pictures. Andrea, your closing thoughts. <laughs> I don't know if I could follow that. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> with, with my, for me, this is this is a personal thing here. With me, you don't like my tats, my mods, any any of that stuff? I didn't do it for you. Fuck off. That's actually a very subtle but great piece of advice. Keep in mind, when you're designing your mod or your ink, if you're thinking about what the world will think, 
you're think you're coming at it from the wrong direction. You can take that into your equation, but mm -hmm. first and foremost, as Kevin pointed out, with that picture on the fridge for months, and when you go, is it still cool? Do I still want to see that every day? You. But then again, the first. good. Then again, if I don't like something that you've done, screw me. It's yours. It's all about you. You don't True have story. to worry about it. I'm going to read a couple comments, give my closing thoughts, which I kind of already gave. Uh, Weird Wind says, even though I've been around and sometimes in a tattoo permissive culture for decades, I think the reason I've not personally interested in is because the artistic expression of thought I put into a tattoo ends up going into my writing. Also, I'm lazy. Getting a tattoo seems like a lot of effort. Michael says, I can totally relate to that as a writer. It's my story. Hope you like it. But it's a, the important thing is, do I like it? Um, <clears throat> here, here's what I'll tell you, gentlemen. How cool would it be to have a tattoo intensive character? I just wrote that note for a future book <laughs> where this character, one of the things, you know, instead of chewing on a toothpick, flipping a coin, always clearing their throat, or whatever personal affectation they have, yeah, what about the person with dozens of tattoos and each time they interact with another character in the book <clears throat> the other character notices a different tattoo that has a different meaning or suggestion to them in that interaction that's all i can think of is maui maui is great maui is great okay so i think we're all done with that we've kind of read comments we've given closing thoughts do it for you uh there is times i i don't think we actually touch on this there is times you need to consider, not follow, but consider general society's reaction. It will influence how your life goes. That is a fucking fact. It will. Now, if you could work around that, it's a different story. I I've always told people younger than me, especially my own children, you go out and do some fucked up shit. You go to make mistakes. You go ahead and do something. But before you do it, understand and consider the repercussions of your actions. And if you feel those repercussions are worth it, do it. But at least know what they will be. And then don't fucking cry when you have to deal with them. Kevin, I saw you, your, your lips moving like you want to say something. It just did. Uh... I was going to say, it occurred to me, in a sense, the fact that, I mean, I, I've mentioned earlier that none of my tattoos are anywhere where I can't keep them hidden if I choose to. And in a sense, on the one hand, you can argue that's a sign of weakness or a sign of, like you say, taking into consideration society's values as well. But also, it, it, it kind of makes them like a weapon for me, in a sense, if you think about it. You don't know I have tattoos, so you don't prejudge me. Now, I can keep that hidden from you, or I can choose to reveal that to you. So I have the power to to fuck with, to, to alter your perception of me now, based on whether or not I choose to let you have that information. Whereas if they're there, in your face, from the moment you see me and I can't hide them, <laughs> you, you're you inclined to... Yeah. Michael said <laughs> Schrodinger's tattoo... <laughs> sure it is, yeah. it's there but it's not there it's true and, and I see what you're saying there and it definitely makes sense and I have definitely I have based a lot of my life on go ahead underestimate me because you don't know me and, and that's that it, <laughs> it's whether it's physicality mental ability sense of humor because people look at me and they think oh what a nerdy normal straight laced guy and then they look closer with dozens of tattoos, a half dozen piercings, uh, this background in history and all these things that I do. I'm like an ogre or an onion. I have layers. <laughs> and so does everybody else. Parfait. <laughs> okay, let's do some closing music. Let's get the hell out of here. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Yes. I want to remind you to join us on our other podcast, Write Night, not just for writers or readers, though for both of those, but also for all creative cre people across the board, covering the spectrum from creative 
too technical. Um, on Stealing for Survival, join us for the fantasy play. Oh, my God, Elizabeth is still here. Either or she fucked off for an hour and came back. One of the two, we can't tell. Um, join us for Stealing for Survival, a Dungeons & Dragons game that takes place in the world where I write my fantasy novels. So check out the novels, check out the game. Join us for that fun on podcast or live. Don't forget, you can... I can hear the purring in the mic, Andrea. That's amazing. Sorry. No, no. <laughs> um, and uh, <laughs> Elizabeth just masturbated through the whole show. That is either some good... Oh, Fred. Um, you can email us at talkofthetavernshow at gmail.com with your thoughts about this episode down the road, and we might read it off. Let us know if you have a birthday or a special message you want to send to a friend who also listens because you forced him and chained him to that chair in the basement, don't do that. Oh, I have a birthday announcement. I'm sorry. What's your we told you. Yeah, um, everybody, if you if you want to say happy birthday, Travis's birthday is Friday the 13th. There we go. Here's the Friday the 13th. Here's the, yeah. Cheers. Mm. Okay, and uh, other than that, I want to really thank, first and foremost, most of all, all of you guys who came in here, remember it's sub chat only. So every person you heard the name of is supporting this channel by subscribing. And Twitch Prime, which is linked to Amazon Prime, you can subscribe for free. But I also want to thank the folks who subbed tonight, like Gary, Michael J. Lawrence, Jewel, any others that I have forgotten or missed, everybody who threw bits tonight, everybody who gave follows, hosts, or picked up merchandise or rated us. Also want to thank Triple U and Ethan Strauss who support us on Patreon every month. As well as Berta and Musical Wizardry who support us on our uh, PayPal subscription. You guys are awesome. But most, if you're sitting here right here in front of me, interact with me. I love you most. You're okay, I'm talking to <clears throat> Kevin and Andrea. But also the people in chat. Let's get some outro music. Oh wait, closing, closing toast. Closing, closing toast. toast. You gotta remind that shit. Cogsley, what do we got? When you know you're dreaming, you can change and influence your dreams. Waking is no different. And that is a quote directly from me. Here's to changing your world and your reality by realizing what it is. Here's to you guys. Have a great night. We are fucking Cheers. out of here. Thanks for joining us in the discussion shenanigans tonight. You are the oh, and thank you to our moderators to very much. We're Don't win. forget to join Gary. us at the tab. Until then, have fun, keep learning, and be good to one another. Now, raise your glass in good cheer. Enjoy the small moments every day and steamy dreams every night.